This is the final episode of Geogon Rising. I am Haru Ren. Welcome to my review of the final episode of Geogon Rising. So, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and let's dive in into the final episode of Geogon Rising. Dare I mention it's the final episode. The first part is Geoforge Drago. Magnus and I were in the middle of the final brawl of the Battle Judgment. Oh, of course, it's the finale episode of the season, so of course we need a Dan recap, but they don't even show what Dan is actually narrating. Instead, it's Drago's entire Dr Geoforge transformation. Look, I love the animation that they did for Geoforge Dragonoid, don't get me wrong, but you gotta make the narration line up even a Big guys! And the battle wages on! Geoforge Dragonoid versus Ultimate Villoc, but every move they do, Villoc just absorbs another Infinity Stone, I mean Faction Crystal, and also Crystal Blue can hear the feelings of the Geogon Villoc is controlling. Man, is the animation for this fight really cool. No! Lord Holy crap, Villoc throwing Spartillion in the line of fire like that? That was brutal! Man, this is like some boss fight where every time you fail to defeat the villain, they just get stronger. So, you know, let's phone in a little exposition about Crystal Blue's ability to be able to hear Bakugan and Geogon. You know, all this time throughout the season, she's shown to have all of these abilities, but we never knew how or what they do. I honestly really like the mystery of never knowing how she's able to hear the calls of Bakugan and Geogon, because she's always portrayed as a kind of supernatural psychic character. It's just the mystery of it that's really intriguing. But, you know, they say Crystal Blue was the first human to visit the Geogon Realm, a place even Bakugan haven't been to before, and somehow gain the ability to feel Bakugan and Geogon. Crystal Blue was the first human to be able to visit the home realm of the Geogun. Even the Bakugan haven't been there. That meeting changed her. And that's it. No explanation to how she got there in the first place, not even she knows how she got the abilities. Just chess piece storytelling with no substance. They somehow try to explain some important background to this new character, and we still didn't manage to learn anything new! The main key element that you were missing from the story was... Why? So, Villac managed to absorb the last Infinity Stone, I mean Faction Crystal, and now he's super powerful with enough strength to destroy the Nexus along with the Earth. But Drago feels the power from everyone, even the old Bakugan like Feral and Pegatrix and them inside him. Falcron, Sharktar, Fanica, Farasco, and Pinsator give their strength to Drago as well. Okay, are we really getting the Super Spirit Bomb segment again? Drago! 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 Yeah, no, this episode just reuses the same predictable formula as the last two seasons. Drago gets powerful, Drago is losing even though he's powerful because the villain got more powerful, Drago realizes the bonds between Bakugan and his friends, and then gets more powerful and makes a comeback. That's it! Moving on! So we're at the final part, at the end of the fight. Somehow Sharktar, Falcon, Fennica, Farascal, and Pizzator are resonating with the artifacts? What? I mean, honestly, I believe it, since some of them did play a role in getting the artifacts. Honestly, I wish they really expanded on this more. Remember when these five couldn't disappear for some unknown reason after they lost? Why couldn't they use that plot device and use it to explain... I don't know, maybe their connection to the artifacts helped prevent them from disappearing or something? Call these five the Prophet Bakugan or something like that, because that plot point where they never disappear after they lost, that never got resolved. It was just forgotten about and never explained why. So Drago got the strength to fight Villoc again because bonds and friendship or something like that, and we get the awesome hand-to-hand -hand fight between Villoc and Drago. And also awesome moves as usual with every season finale. <laughs> Bam, bam. But in a scene that is just absolutely awesome, Trux, Hydras, Feral, Beatrix, Halicor, all of the old awesome brothers Bakugan, the Geogons, even Nilius are all giving their strength towards Dragonoid in a very Avengers Endgame Portal style scene. Also pause this for a second, is that Enoch? Did Enoch disappear too? That's why we haven't seen him this season. Ah, sadness. Ultimate 
Holy crap, that looked awesome! Villock is defeated, the bond between Earth and Vestroya is saved, the G-Gun all turned out to not be that bad or something. Okay, why was it bad that they returned then, as Gorin said? The return of the Geogon is not to be taken lightly. Now a human has called them back with little concern for the consequences. But you're the one who started all this by calling forth the Geogon! But I had no idea that it would put the Earth in danger! Okay, seriously, I really want to know what Reed and Villox's deal was! What was Gregorius Reed here, a smart rich businessman with an obsession of collecting Bakugan, hoping to gain by helping a crazy maniac separate Earth and Vestroya? Blame is pointless. No, no, this was literally all Gregorius Reed's fault. He first destroys the healing core cell to satisfy his Bakugan collection fetish for the Geogons, then he teams with a guy that would interfere with that obsession, and no other details are ever shared! Seriously, you know what Gregorius Reed's entire role and purpose was for being an antagonist this season? Is to make sure all of this happened. That's it. He has no sense of knowledge of what is going on. He doesn't have any kind of purpose whatsoever. He doesn't do anything to contribute to the story. He just made sure that this happened with Villock. Because Villock was the ultimate main villain. And somehow, Gregorius Reed's path was supposed to connect with Villock. And it didn't work. Veloc and I have an arrangement, one of mutual cooperation. Straight from the diseased sky horse's mouth, bull freaking sh**. Gregorius Reed, honestly in my opinion, is probably the absolute worst villain in this entire reboot. Oh my god, the, the very moment that Reed was paired with Veloc, it immediately erased any kind of credibility Reed had as a character and a villain. Is it understandable how Reed's mere appearance pisses me off? So, back at the Auralis realm, Drago reveals since he is a part of the council, he can't go back to Earth yet, and Pyravian has selected Falcron and Shakhtar and them to guard the faction artifacts and crystals. Aw oh, man, this again where we have to say goodbye? Especially Bakugan we only just met this season, and their plotline is still unresolved by the way. We still don't know why they don't disappear! Ah, screw it. The awesome brawlers return to Earth, Reed is somehow identified as the leader of the Wasted Opportunity group, the Mass Brawlers. This is clearly recycled footage, I don't know what you're smiling about, stupid. Crystal Blue and Jenny Hackett are traveling the world to find Bakugan for whatever reason, and just when the awesome brawlers are going home, in a scene reminiscent of the first episode, Drago returns and he brings along all of the awesome brawlers old Bakugan in such a heartwarming and exciting ending to close this season. So, that was Geogon Rising, the final episode. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. Ah, the finale of Geogon Rising. Oh my god, I'm so very torn about this. Well, the good things I liked about it, the animations were absolutely beautiful, the overall theme of bonds between human and Bakugan were emphasized and cranked up to 11, it was so cool bringing back the old Bakugan for the fight, but still making sure they didn't take the attention away, and just overall being visually impressive to see, as expected from a season finale of Bakugan. Though some things that really annoyed me were the missing plot threads that the finale never touched on. We never got an explanation to why Falcon and them never disappeared, we still never knew what Reed and Villox's relationship was, Crystal Blue's shoehorn origins played no part and seemed like it was a flash of the moment where someone was like, oh crap we forgot to make her more interesting, and they just rushed to do something that said nothing. And I really hate to keep harping on this, but Reed keeps looking more stupid every time he shows up. And for a season that is meant to focus on Geogons rising, we still don't even know a single thing about the Geogons other than they are strong ancient warriors that just show up and help whoever because fighting is awesome. Do you see why I keep saying in the previous review that there seems to be some parts missing from this season? I don't know, this season really was all style and no substance and it was infuriating to try and understand. This finale was fun to watch but did nothing to help alleviate the frustration this season has caused me. So this gets a low Geogun in the middle. Thank you for watching this review of Geogon Rising. Be sure to press the thumbs up and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye.